Oh, they're banging through the twisties now. It shouldn't be legal. It shouldn't be legal, this machine. Doing an order 60, it's all in the launch, isn't it? So I am wearing my orange hat, which can mean only one thing. We are reviewing another KTM, another orange beauty. This time it's the 2022 Super Duke GT. Now, I've ridden the original Gen 1 Super Duke, loved it, actually did a track day on that bike, and it was fantastic. And that bike was the main reason why I bought my Gen 1 Super Duke. Then two years ago, I tested the Gen 2 version of the Super Duke, the facelift model. Well, this is the 2.1. This is very similar to the Gen 2 version I, I tried before, but this has updated electronics from the Super Adventure and a few other tweaks. So join me on this scorching spring evening for a little thrash around the block on the Super Duke. This thing is a weapon. This thing is literally a beast. So grab yourself a cup of tea make yourself comfortable and Chopsy, roll the intro. Ooh. Sounds angry. So the Super Duke GT, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's a bike I've spent quite a lot of time on in the past you know i've owned a gen 1 super duke i love the super duke i really really love the new gen 3 super duke i'm actually surprised i haven't bought one yet <laughs> i love it that much and i'm actually taking the new evo version around cadwell park next week So riding position on this is pretty comfortable. Again, I actually prefer this position, I think, than the, an adventure bike. Because in this position, I'm not sat completely upright. I am cantered forward a little bit. And I'd say I've got 15% of the weight on my wrist. 10 to 15% of the weight riding this bike at 40 mile hour is on my wrist. And I've only got 85% of the weight on my backside. Whereas if you're on an adventure bike, you're sat like this and you have 100% of your weight on your backside. And I do suffer from a, a bit of a, a tentative backside. My backside has enough <laughs> after a certain amount of time sat on it. And so I prefer to spread my weight a little bit between my wrists and my bum. Obviously coming from a sports bike, I'm used to you know, lots of weight on your wrist, but to 15% weight on your wrist is, is perfectly fine. And I prefer that. My legs are, my feet are sort of behind my hips a little bit, you know, so you're not just bolt upright comfortable. You've got an aggressive stance, an aggressive stance on this bike. And I think it is very, very similar to the Super Duke from a, from a riding position. Even the latest Super Duke is a very, very familiar position, a more aggressive position than some of the other Super Nakeds. The piece de resistance on this bike is the engine and it always has been on the gen 3 they brought you know the chassis up to match the engine but on this version this is based on the gen 2 super duke so you can notice if i'm being brutally honest this has a lot this, this is obviously a gen 2 super duke so it, it's not quite as perfect from the handling setup you know there's no linkage on the rear shock it mounts directly to the swinging arm you know, the, the frame is the old frame. It's not got that three times rigid, rigid frame as the new Super Duke 3. So you can notice a difference that this doesn't feel quite as agile around the twisties. And there's a little bit more weight transfer back to front than the latest Gen 3 Super Duke. But, you know, it, it's nitpicking. And again, riding this in isolation, you know, you won't really be able to tell the difference, but it isn't quite as good as the new Gen 3 Super Duke, if I'm being brutally honest. And the engine, you know, there's balancing shafts. It may be 1301 cc, but it doesn't really produce that many vibes. It's a little bit vibey, but it's, it's you know, the pistons are the size of Dulux paint tins going up and down. You know, there's going to be a little bit of vibration, but KTM have done some sort of magic to, to minimise that vibration, sorry, got to have you. And it's incredible, it's incredible what they've achieved 
with this motor and how smooth they've managed to get it, it is, it's a marvel of engineering is what it is. Again, throttle response and feel from the engine may be not quite as nice as the latest Super Duke. You know, it's, it's Gen 2 and you can tell it's slightly Gen 2 when you're familiar with the new Super Duke 3. But again, I'm nitpicking. I am nitpicking. They basically call this bike the 2.1, you know, the 2.1 Super Duke because it's got, it's like the Gen 2, but it's just got the latest screen, electronics, switch gear. So it's got basically an electronics update, but fundamentally and mechanically, you know, there's not a huge change on this bike for this year. And, you know, there is rumors of perhaps a new version coming next year. You know, I asked KTM, is there going to be a new one next year? And they said, well, to be honest, you know, the factory has not told us yet if there's going to be a new one. So we don't know. We don't know if there's going to be a new one next year, but my personal feeling, and I think there may have even been some spy shots lurking around that, yes. <laughs> oh God, there could be a new one next year. But that, that back there, this, that is what this bike does so well. It just, it's just a hooligan, you know. You want a little bit of fun, leave, it, leave, the, leave the revs at mid-range, give it a handful, wheels in the air. And what is great, there's a big bump there, what is great with this bike and these electronic updates is of course this bike has got an electronic suspension. It always did have electronic suspension, you know. I think it was the first KTM in the range to have electronic suspension. At the moment I've got it sporty, so I've got the suspension sporty. It's all displayed on the bottom of the screen so you can see exactly what mode you're in. I've got sport suspension and a flick of a switch, well, if you, if you set the, uh, the shortcuts, there's a couple of shortcuts on the dashboard, I can just flick that back to me and I can go straight to the suspension menu and say, no, I want to go comfort, please. I no longer want to be sporty and you can bang it in comfort and you can it's the damping it adjusts and you can feel the damping is now relaxed I can still feel the texture of the tarmac and that's what I really like about the suspension on this bike it's not like the Super Adventure the Super Adventure suspension is much more com even in that sporty mode you still can't pick up the feeling from the tarmac this is a much sportier bike than the Super Adventure. You know, I can really feel every little bit of texture of the tarmac on this bike, and that's brilliant. And even when I go in comfort mode, I can still feel the texture of the tarmac, but it's just a little bit more wallowy. When you hit a, when you hit a pothole, it doesn't jar you quite so much, but it's definitely a more sporty ride. Now, I'm gonna quickly go back into, there's my favorite hill climb mode coming up. So let's bang it back in sports suspension, and you can feel it bouncing, you know, the whole thing's harder. Also the rear, will do preload adjustments so you can set whether you've got two people on it you can set whether you've got you know luggage and i've got it set to one person with some luggage because <laughs> i'm carrying my luggage around my middle and uh, that definitely helps props the rear up a little bit all right let's bang it through the twisties now and what i love it it really handles i mean i've taken one of these on track which i said and it really goes around a racetrack as well as it goes on the road you know it's, it's not the lightest bike i think it's about 220 kilos so it's not too bad and at the moment i've got a full tank of fuel full 23 liters of fuel aboard this bike but what you can do when you do get to your on your alps tour when you hit the twisties you can have fantastic fun on this bike and it, it handles much better than an adventure bike it really does how it's more geared out. it's a GT machine at the end of the day that's what it's all about GT by name a GT by nature in the tight stuff it'll do it you know it, it, it will change direction quick it, you throw it around you you've got utter confidence in that front end you get loads of feedback from that front end you can bang it in I mean I don't know of many other big GT machines that you can throw around like this bike it really loves to be chucked around you know it is it is a big supermoto it feels like a big 
Supermoto. Oh. So there she is, the Super Duke GT. Let's take a closer look. So probably my biggest criticism of this bike is how it looks from the front. It's not the most attractive looking bike from the front, is it? You can't deny it looks a little bit weird from the front. And you know, that, that regular Super Duke headlight, when it's all integrated in with the screen and everything, uh, it, it, it's, let's be honest, I think it's a look only a mother could love. Certainly directly from the front. I think if you throw in a bit of side angle, sort of a rear profile, you know, that, that sort of angle looks pretty decent. From the side, I think it looks pretty decent. And from the rear looking forward, I think it looks pretty decent. But that absolutely front on, front end on, I'm not so sure, but uh, looks a subjective. Starting at the front, we've got M50 calipers, not Stylema, like the new Super Duke. As I've said, you know, this bike is based on the Gen 2 Super Duke. You have cornering lights on the side here, um, and there might be some indicators built into those, but there's also cornering lights here as well. The heart of the beast, that 1301cc, uh, 90 degree, I believe, V-twin motor. This, this is an incredible engine on this bike. The, the engine dominates this machine. And what I love about the, the Super Duke is just, you know, everything is painted. All the engine is painted. The casings, the cylinder heads, you know, it's all painted. I don't know what they use. I don't know if it's just a powder coat, but I really prefer fully painted engines rather than just sort of bare aluminium. I think it wears better, it lasts longer. And the finish of these, you know, that doesn't deteriorate. So I really like the finish on the KTM engines. I think uh, more manufacturers need to just paint their engines and not just leave them bare aluminium because that just tarnishes over time. Little point, but I like it. New for this year, it does have the newer wheels, the lighter, newer um, cast wheels. These aren't forged or anything, but they're much lighter than new design Super Duke wheels. And you do get that little bit of orange sticker on them as well. The bike has a dedicated rear subframe with, of course, proper mounting points for the panniers. I don't have the panniers, but I have tried a bike with panniers before, and I think they're very good from what I remember, the KTM official panniers, which clip in here. So that's the beauty of a GT bike, isn't it? Where you've got proper integrated panniers. On the Gen 2 Super Duke, the rear shock mounts directly to the swinging arm. On the Gen 3, you've got a linkage. So this is one of the differences that affect the handling of this bike. The shock's mounting directly to that single side of swinging arm. Switch gear is the same as the new Gen 3 Super Duke. So I think it's more the Super Adventure is where they've taken the switch gear and the, the screen from. What is a really nice feature, which I mentioned, is the shortcut buttons. So you can assign these to whatever you want. So push it forward is one assignment, pull it back is another assignment. Heated grips and suspension adjustment is how I've got those set. The dash is rather a big boy. I think it's a six and a half inch TFT. Exactly the same dash as what is on the Super Adventure. And all the menus, sorry, I've got a little bit of reflection on the screen. I can't help that. But you've got all of the sort of biking for trip information, even like wheel pressures, temp you know, tire pressures, the damping adjustment you know all of this good stuff so the whole menu system is very very easy to use very easy to use so uh, i do like the ktm interface with all the screen and everything really easy to use that is but that is it for the closer look at the super duke gt let's jump aboard again the bike comes with standard heated grips which get really hot three levels of heated grips and they go thermonuclear hot which is fantastic also comes with cruise control but there's no adaptive cruise control like on the super adventure you've got regular cruise control but it works really really well and what i love is these buttons up and down to adjust your cruise control up and down and when you go into the performance mode this bike's got the performance pack on it which is the, which is how i'm running it now i've got it run without any wheelie control and you can then adjust how much slip you want. So you can go up and down on those cruise control buttons and adjust your slip. And if you want to then use the cruise control in the performance mode, you can, but when the cruise control's on, it overrides. These then are no longer adjusting slip, they're adjusting cruise control. And they're no longer adjusting the, the slip. So I saw someone say, yeah, performance mode's great, but you can't run the cruise control in performance mode. You can on this one. Let's chuck it around a faster corner, shall we? Out of the seat, tuck your knees under. Ooh, we 
he's had to readjust his line. I mean, he's in the way as well. Let's chuck in here, front brake, yeah, loads of power, loads of feel. Get on the rear just to settle it through the corners a little bit. Hang off a bit. Give it the guns and you've got so much, so much grunt. It's, it shouldn't be legal. It shouldn't be legal, this machine. It will sit on its side beautifully. I think the biggest downside with this bike, with all that torque, is tyre use. You know, it's, it's going to love to eat a rear tyre, this machine. But that aside... <laughs> oh, power of that. Oh. There's not a more fun way across continents, I tell you that. So there are some unlockables on this bike, which, you know, it is what it is. KTM do insist upon it. The performance mode is one of them, which is great. You must have that. You must have the performance mode. And I think the quick shifter and blipper are also an unlockable on this bike. And quick shifter blipper's okay. It can be a little bit clunky, would be my only criticism. Perhaps a little bit clunky at times. Um, I mean, it's a massive, massive... V twin, you know, they're not the easiest of things to, to get a smooth quick shifter on. So yeah, a little bit clunky at times, perhaps a quick shifter and blipper, and sometimes I'll I'll just do a manual change. This this showing example. Well, higher up the rev range is perfect, but lower down. Yeah, there's a bit of a there's a bit of a, a lurch between gear changes. Like the gear change is quite slow and it lurches a little bit, but you know, it's fine. Small criticism. Look at that kite. There's a kite there didn't see the string. <laughs> Bad jokes. Bad jokes. So much power! It's almost too fast. It's almost too ridiculous. You know, overtaking is an absolute breeze on this bike. And also cruising is unbelievable. I mean, in sixth gear, it's like an overdrive gear. You know, anything below 70 miles an hour and it is chugging. That six gear, you can see it's chugging a little bit now, two and a half thousand revs. That six gear is really like an overdrive, and if you were to do 90 on it on the motorway, it's only doing like four and a half thousand revs at 90. It's unbelievable. Brake feel is also lovely. I mean, I criticised the, or uh, well, my Gen 1, the brakes weren't great on it. The Gen 2, they were much better. I mean, obviously, the new Super Duke 3 has the Stylemus. This doesn't have the Stylemus setup, it's on the M50s, but. There's a really nice brake feel, loads of power. It's still a really nice braking system on this. We'll see how it compares to the Gen 3 tomorrow, but it's, it's really nice. The rear is also, again, very nice. And it's quite nice to sort of balance the bike in the corners with the rear brake on this. That works quite well. You know, when you brake at the front, this doesn't have like the anti-dive technology that the the Super Adventure's got, so perhaps it does dive a little bit, a little bit, you know. Again, we're, we're not, we're talking uh, splitting hairs a bit here, but I find it better to adjust your speed for a set of twisters with the rear, you know, just to balance the bike on the rear brake a little bit. But dri talking of drive, look, fourth gear, fourth gear, 30 miles an hour. This is, this is gonna chug a little bit. Right, it's going to chug quite a lot, but once it hits like four grand, it's just go! Tiny little bit of chugsters there. I mean, I think, I don't think this engine is quite as flexible, again, as the new Super Duke engine. <laughs> I keep comparing this to the new Super Duke, but I think, that, I think that's fair. I think it's fair to do that because, you know, this bike is, is the latest from KTM at the moment, you know. And it's a Super Duke GT, so you need to know really how it compares to the latest Super Duke. Also, look, it's got little cubby holes here. There's either side, there's a little cubby hole and go in here and pop that open. Keep stuff in it. I don't know, Mars bar, Snickers, something like that. Same the other side, little, little cubby hole. Maybe there's a tool thing in there. So that's quite nice. Bit of storage there. Keep the key in there, because it's keyless. Right, what we're going to do quickly is... Uh, I actually brought my draggy with me to do a bit of naught to 60 testing. Now, it's shifting. I don't normally speed test fast bikes because, 
you know 60 miles an hour comes around in absolutely no time but it's almost first gear you know so i don't i don't and it's you know it's all down when you're going to doing a 0 to 60 it's all in the launch isn't it and if you're launching uh, a bike you know it's, it's it can be a little bit uh, hit and miss you know a lower 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 capacity bike lower powerful bike it's much easier to launch you know and it, it comes down really to you know the rider as to how good your launch is more than the actual bike itself but i thought for a bit of fun let's just try and launch this see what we can get just just to, just for a bit of fun really so let's go into my draggy remember we did the north we looked in the auto 60 the law the norden uh a couple of weeks ago didn't we and i think that did it in 4.21 seconds if i remember well what oh, memory i've got so let's see what we can do just out of interest i just want to see how easy this is off the line that, that's sort of really what i want to do ultimate add-ons mounts by the way for all your speed testing requirements ultimate add-ons 15 percent off link in the description <laughs> <laughs> right, I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know if I'm going to be It's actually got launch control, this. It has got launch control. But I prefer to do things like that manually. Because I'm a man. <laughs> uh, I'm going to switch on the wheelie control because I'm not an idiot. Well, let's see. This may be hideously... This may be a terrible idea. Terrible, terrible that was chop seat. Let's try that again. One more go. That's my best ever. 3.93 seconds. That's not too shabby, is it? So the Norden was 4.21 seconds, the Tiger 660 was 4.67 seconds, the Energica Ago. 3.81 so it's not as fast as the energy Ego the v-strom 4.66 so we got a new uh well we haven't got a new winner but we got the fastest naked machine the fastest ice vehicle the fastest combustion engine vehicle in with a 3.93 seconds hmm i could probably do better I, mean, I could go back and i could do better than that i'm sure but um that'll do for me nice there you are, your official Super Duke GT 0 60, 3.93 seconds. We'll have to see what the, uh, the Super Duke Evo does it in. So there we are, the Super Duke GT is a monster of a bike, a beast of a bike. I mean, it carries over everything from the fully naked Super Duke, but gives you that bit of fairing a bit of wind protection, a bit of fuel capacity, 23 litres and, I'd say, and about 200 miles range by the way, uh, as tested by me. So it brings all of that to the party. So if you want the ultimate, and I think this is the ultimate long distance hooligan, for me it's the GT. It's this bike. I think this is the daddy. This is £18,000 worth of monster. <laughs> This is, this is a brilliant bike, and if I wanted a bike to go south of France, the Alps, southern Spain, and then get there and have as much fun as what I would be having, or 98% or of the fun I would be having if I took a naked bike, then this is the one. This is the one for me, proper luggage, proper screen, and that screen is very good. Screens are quite a personal thing, and sometimes bigger screens are worse. You get vibration on your helmet. It's, it's really, really, really difficult to get a really good screen. And I find this very, very good. So this bike has everything I want from a long distance machine. But it's also got that fun, that excitement, that, that beast of a machine. You know, that, that hooliganism, which I love in a motorcycle. I'm, I'm a hooligan at heart. And this is why... I can't think of a KTM bike which isn't a hooligan. What KTM bike is there which isn't a hooligan? They always bring hooligan to their machines. I mean, they're ready to race. That's the tagline, you know. They're hooligans, and I love that. And this, for me, is the ultimate hooligan. Yes, I think, even though it's unconfirmed, I think there will be a new version next year. And that's obviously going to be probably based on the new Super Duke, but they've been saying that for a few years. There might be a new version. 
and we've still got this one so you know looks aside it's not the best looking GT machine I'll give you that but I honestly think it's the best to ride the, Sup the uh, Suzuki GSX-S GT is really really good as well and that bike is obviously 11,500 or something it's way cheaper than this but if you want the ultimate I think it's this. I mean, I haven't tested the new H2SX. That also looks good with all the new adaptive cruise control, but I know Kawasaki's. It won't be a hooligan. It won't be a hooligan. This is your hooligan. This is your hooligan's choice. Evening, sir. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. 